Today's demo day, Fluke Biomedical Demo Day, we're going to be covering the ESA 612, 614, and 615 electrical safety analyzers. And we have a, a special guest with us, Justin Ross from Roscoe Solutions. He'll be here to help address any questions you may have on, uh, on the ESAs. Um, before we get to rolling here, let's go ahead. I, we've prepared a, uh, a short video for you. And, uh, and we'll have plenty of time for Q&A after this video. So I will go ahead and kick that off. Hello everybody, I'm Justin Ross with Fluke Biomedical. And today I'm gonna to go over some of the accessories for our ESA line, specifically the 612, 14, and 15. Today I have an ESA 614 here. So this is a product you only see in the US market. Um, if you're outside the United States, you'll probably be familiar with our 612 or 615. So what some people don't realize is just how many accessories we have for this device and how much easier it can make your life having some of these accessories. So let's start going over some of them. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down so we can see past it. The first one I wanna cover is the power cord. So if you've purchased any of our older devices, you'll notice that the power cord on this one is slightly different. The first thing is it only has a 15 amp plug where before we had a 20 amp plug and you had to have an adapter on the end of it the cord used to be a little bit shorter. So now the cable's about two feet longer, it's much more flexible, and it comes with a 15 amp plug, so you don't need that adapter. If you want this or you don't have the part number for it, please reach out to your local Fluke rep or jump on our website, and we'll be happy to help you out with getting all these part numbers, but there's the first accessory. Okay, moving on. Standard accessories that we see in the package is these two cables here, the black cable and the red cable. All right, so and you just keep rolling off the desk, so we'll put you there. All right, now, this is our ground cable. Um, before we used to use a Calvin cable, which is a dual cable, this is a single wire stranded cable. So what's nice about that, if you break the cable, lose the cable, forget the cable, eat the cable, whatever the reason is, grab any of our other flute cables, simply plug it in, then you can put on an alligator clip and take it to the ground and you're do it zero out the cable and you're back up and running. It makes it super easy so if you ever have an issue in the field, any flute cable will plug in or one off your multimeter maybe, plug in, zero it out and back up and running. Now that we talked about this alligator clip, I want to go a little bit more in depth with it. And it doesn't sound like a big deal until you start digging into it and the first thing you notice is it's chiseled. So it gets narrower at the tip here as well as this way. And then when you open it up, there is an extra tooth right here at the very tip, as well as some serrated teeth here along the jawline, which allows you to reach into those recessed ground pins and really hold on. So when you're connected to your safety analyzer, you're not trying to hold that cable on there and then you're at the safety analyzer is and record results. It's going to hold it in place for you. Ow, is that thing sharp? All right, now here's something that I did as a biomed for years, and uh, if you'd like to raise your hand or not, you have to admit we've probably done it. At some point in time, you couldn't get to the ground part. You had to try to reach in through something. So you probably stuck like an Allen wrench in here or a screwdriver in your, in your alligator clip to reach in then. That's another point of uh, contact. It can change your resistances and it's just not a good idea. It's not safe. So instead we can take off this alligator clip and plug in the probe. That simple. And now you can reach into those recessed ground pins. That nice and easy. If you lose it, it comes with two, it comes with a black one, you can use that one. There you go. Nice, easy trade out. Now let's start talking about applied parts. So applied parts, you have five applied parts ports across the top of the safety analyzer. And the safety analyzer comes with one of these five snap to banana pin adapters, which would plug into here. So this is great, so you can put five banana pins in, or use this, you can use five snap pins. Now in a prior video, you may have seen us talk about how to connect an entire defib at one time. You like a three lead, five lead, or 12 lead defibrillator. The problem with that is, is we have to use another accessory. Now this accessory is not part, technically part of the ESA accessory kit. Actually, you're gonna find it's under the Impulse 7000 accessories. This is the hands-free adapter. This one just has to be for a Zoll, but we also have them for Medtronic, Philips, and all the other defibrillators. So when you're done through discharge test, you would disconnect this from the Impulse 7000, boop, and you can then apply it over here to your ESA 614 or 615. So while it's technically not an ESA adapter, I'm going to consider it one. Now, 
If you do this, obviously you're not gonna be able to put this snap pin adapter in because it's filled up with those other two ports there, right? So how are you gonna connect your leads? Here's how. We have these universal snap to banana pin adapters. So here it has a banana pin on this end. You can put a banana pin through here and a snap onto here. And they simply plug into these ports. Look how easy that is. And then I could take my three lead ECG off my defibrillator or my patient monitor or whatever have you and click, click, click right there. Easy enough to do. This come in a bag of 10. Um, this is not a part number to find, so it's 246-2072. That's universal snap to banana pin adapter. Okay, so here's three leads and a hands-free. Obviously, you're gonna have a problem if you have a 10 lead defibrillator. You only have three leads. So we can take these out and we can use this other adapter. This is called our one to 10 adapter, which allows you to connect 10 banana pins and it comes with the second one of the snap to banana pin adapters. So you can use that one and the one that comes with the ESA. There you go. And then you have 10 snaps to one output. It also comes with a small black cable. You can plug it in here and into your applied parts. So now you can put up to 10 leads as well as your hands-free adapter into this top of the safety analyzer. That nice, easy to do. Maybe 10 leads isn't enough. Maybe you need 20 leads, simple enough. Another one to 10 adapter, plug it in, off you go. Technically you can expand it up to 50 leads. Pretty cool, easy thing to do. All right, now I'm gonna move that off to the side here. And let's talk about ultrasounds for a second. So we have our ULT 800. Um, a lot of people are testing our T probes or testing our T probes with the ULT 800. The problem with the OT800 is it is a pass-fail device. And if you need to know the exact reading on that, on that T-probe or your ultrasound probe, how are you going to do it? So there's this adapter right here. This is a 347-2633 uh, ESA615 uh, ultrasound adapter. Okay, and what I'll allow you to do is connect the plates, the adapter plates from the OT800 or the dual conductivity probe to this, and then this will go into your safety analyzer just like that. I recommend you get two of them because you're gonna need one for the uh, cut for the adapter plate and you're gonna need one for the T-probe. So one up there, down there, one up here. Makes it nice, easy. Now you can connect just through, use the applied parts test, the sink current, and you can get the exact leakage off that T-probe or ultrasound probe. There you go. Another adapter that you might wanna use with that is this ground probe. Here it is and you can put this into the fluid. Um, there's some other things you can do with it, but it's got that old style connector on it that's familiar with our uh, ESAs, so you can connect it right to that last adapter, and then this would go into your fluids. I actually, you connect it up here. There you go. And then into the fluid bath to test your ultrasound probes or your T-probes. Another great adapter. Um, this one is 239-2427. So you're starting to see there's lots of capabilities with the safety analyzer. A lot of things that we forgot about or didn't know about and didn't know how to connect. So we've been kind of just maybe not doing without or finding another way. One more thing I like to talk about, point to point testing. So I'm going to grab the two cables that come with the safety analyzer. There's my red one, here's my black one. And if I was gonna do point to point testing, this is something that's required in most states and in the United States on your MRI tables, your CT tables, um, x-ray tables, lab analyzers, things like that. If you're gonna do a new one or do a repair of one, those permanently fixed devices. You're going to need to do point to point testing to get the ground wire resistance and check for transient voltages and leakages. So you connect these two in here and then you go and do your testing. The problem is you'll notice you only have about a six foot reach with these two cables. That's not quite far enough. You might need to go further. So we also sell 50 and 75 foot leads. So what we would do is simply maybe take out this black lead here. And of course it's gonna tie itself around. Murphy's Law here, one second. Take that off. Remove this cable from the batch. And then we can simply plug this into here. There we go. And then into here. So. 75 foot cable here. I think we'll reach now. But we changed cables. We just changed cables. So anytime you change cable or introduce a new cable to the ESA, 
We want to put the two together. We go into the point to point function, go to the ground wire function, and we're going to zero the cables out, right? Because there's a lot of length here. So we want to make sure that resistance is zero, then take our measurements. So we can do our, our uh, ground wire resistance and our leakages. So there you go. There is a bunch of accessories for this, and that there are more, but these are some of the ones I like the most that make my job easy as a biomed. So I thank you for joining me today as we go over the accessories for the ESA 612, 14, and 15, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Hello everybody, I'm Justin Ross, and I'm back with our next video on how to connect a uh, five lead or 12 lead uh, ECG defibrillator to our ESA 612, 14, and 15. And we're going to introduce the one to 10 adapter. So your 612 or 615 comes with one of these snap to banana pin adapters. When you buy the one to 10 adapter, you get a second one. Here we go. So we can connect up to 12 leads with snap or banana pins to the ECG, to the ESA at once. I'm gonna simply take my cable and plug it into here. And we'll set that down here. And I'm gonna take this into the first port. And then the way I like to do it is I'm going to take my hands-free adapter like we did in the first video. So here's this is going to be a hands-free adapter. I'm done with my discharge test with the Impulse 7000. I'm simply going to take this out and I'm going to plug this into these two ports on the top of the safety analyzer. There we go. And now that leaves these two holes over here. And you're going to ask what are those for. So in my case with the ESA 6, 12, 14, and 15, you get one more standard black cable. And I'm going to go ahead and plug that into here. And instead of the alligator clip that I typically use, I'm going to use this push probe. And we'll cover what this is for in a second. And then again, here's our ground wire cable. So this is going to go to the ground stud. If you've changed the cable, ate the cable, lost the cable, forgot the cable, and had to use some other cable, what you can do with this, we'll start off by going to the ground. We're going to ground wire resistance and we're going to zero our cable out. Now I'll take this to the ground stud and the defibrillator. Plug the defibrillator into here. My five lead or 12 lead, which is 10 wires ECG over to here, my one to 10 adapter, my hands-free adapter here, and then this other mystery cable that we'll cover here in a second. So ground wire resistance, back to leakage then, and we can do our ground leakage, forward polarity, Raise to neutral for single fault, close it, chassis leakage, normal polarity, raise the earth for single fault. Um, if you do reverse polarity testing, simple enough, and I need these tests, just simply push the polarity button once to off, and then a second time to reverse. So, and then we can go back to normal polarity. So then we'll close and we'll have normal polarity or forward polarity, normal conditions. Now we're going to get into the applied parts, the ECG leads, the hands-free adapter, and our mystery cable here. So we're going to go to, we're still on the UA, the chassis, the leakage screen, and we're going to go over here to more F4. You'll see that this black box with the five white dots corresponds to the five ports across the top of the safety analyzer. We're going to hit the down arrow once, twice, three times, and you'll see different selections that you can have here and I like this one. And this setup, the one to 10 adapter is by itself and then your hands-free adapter is barred together and these last two ports which we have the one single black cable run out of is over here by itself. That's the one I want so I'm going to push select and now our leakages. Normal polarity, normal condition. This is highlighted so here's the leakage on our 12 lead ECG. Over arrow, here's the normal Here's the leakage on our hands-free adapter over arrow. Now here we go. If you look at some of the service managers, you see them once you test the high level ECG port, the COM port, the SPO2 port, any of those other ports they want you to check your leakage for. Do, 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 right across the top of the defibrillator. Now, single fault condition, back across the top of the defibrillator, over arrow, single fault condition for the hands-free adapter, over arrow, single fault condition through the one to 10 adapter. There we go. What's left is the lead isolation. So push the lead isolation button. There we go. And we're gonna push test. So 120 volts comes out of the applied parts through the one to 10 adapter, through the defibrillator, back into the power port. There's our result. Over arrow, 
Again, we're gonna press test. 120 volts to the apply through the hands-free adapter, through the defibrillator, back through the port. There's our result. There we go. We just did an entire 12 lead multifunction uh, patient monitor defibrillator with all one connection. This can be applied to 12 lead ECGs. Whatever it is that you have multiple applied parts, it's that simple to hook them up. So thank you very much and have a great day. Great, great. I, I love that video. Now that video along with others is, you know, in our video library on our website. So uh, make sure, you know, you, you utilize that library of videos on the website. We also have Advantage Training to get additional training. It's free online training. And then our web, our Empower webinar series, those are the webinars that we offer uh, CEU from uh, credits from ACI. So all of that, all of our past webinars are available up there. And then uh, for that continued educational uh, credit, and then the uh, the video library is there as well. But before we get into the q and A, I'd like to get a little engagement from our audience and uh, and do a quick poll. So if we could go ahead and do that. And the poll has been launched. There we go. Thank you, Edna. You're so welcome. how often do you do electrical safety? And uh, just go ahead and make your selection there, only on incoming inspections and repairs, at least once a year on all medical devices or not at all. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close the poll and share with the audience what All right, so 36% on just incoming inspection and repairs, 58 once at least once a year on all medical, and we have six that aren't doing electrical safety at all. So that's that's interesting. What do you what do you think, Justin? That is a very interesting one. I, I'm betting that 36%. Those are my guys up here or my techs up here in the United States, <laughs> and not not our global ones. But it's all, this has been a great discussion and it's been something that's been brought up a lot is why do we still need electrical safety analysis and how are they used and where are they used? And we've cleared up so much confusion with our customers over the years. You know, there still is a great need for electrical safety and there's been things wrote into service manuals and things into standards. And it's kind of gone overlooked just because we haven't had the time to refresh ourselves uh, with current policies and procedures. So I do ask you, take a few seconds and review your policies and procedures and make sure that you're doing all the electrical safety testing that you're required to. Well, the ones that slips through a lot is like we said in that video, testing out the x-ray tables, uh, rad flow tables, you know, your CT tables, any of those permanently installed devices and fixtures, some of those are actually required to be done on a uh, on a certain frequency. So good, that's, that's good data to have, Dan. Great, thank you everyone. Well. Well, with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, move on to our Q&A time. And thank you for those that have, have submitted some of the, the questions. We've gotten a few questions already. And I want to remind you, we have, about, we have about 10 more minutes. So we want to make sure we get your questions answered. So, uh, so use that, that questions portal to address any questions. And, Justin, the first question we had was um, the main difference between the 615 and 612. I don't, I don't, I'm not real clear on the difference between those two. Lots of great devices. question. The 612 and 615 are very, very similar. In fact, you know what? We have a really good diagram that highlights the differences between them. If you go to flukebiomedical.com and then go to the products tab and then scroll down under the products tab to electrical safety analyzers. We've got a nice diagram there that shows and highlights differences between the 12, 14, 15, uh, all of them there. But the largest difference between a 12 and a 15 is onboard automation. That ESA 16 does have its onboard automation and can be used as a standalone device. You don't have to have a PC in order to use it, uh, where the 612 doesn't. But both of those devices are able to be used with um, our one QA or any of our other workflow automation. Uh, platforms. 
Great. Well, I have, I have two other lead-ins here. One, one is the difference between the 614 and 15 now. And then oh, if you could clear right. that one up a little bit first, and then I have another question that, to follow up on that one. Okay, so the 14 and 15. Well, the ESD 614 is a U.S. market only device. So all those you guys, out, or all y'all techs outside the United States, sorry. Uh, the big difference between a 14 and a 15 is the 614 only has the Amy ANSI NFPA 99 standard built into it. So if you're testing to IEC 60601-1 or 62353, you really don't want to try to use that ESA 614. It's not going to have the loads or the standards built into it that you're looking for. So 614, full onboard automation, only one standard. 615, Thank you, all the standards and onboard automation. Then the, the other part of that was, you know, we were talking about uh, the automation built into the device. And you know, I'm, there's a question, they're interested in, you know, our new software, one QA workflow automation software. Which, we, which of these ESAs work best with that solution? Oh, anything but the 609. So the 12, 14, 15, 620 even, they all work great with, uh, with one QA. Yep. Perfect. And then I have another question here. Um, I'm not sure if I am saying this correct. Mainly which current and voltage is measured? Mainly which current and voltage is measured? I'm not really sure what they're asking for, but that does bring up a really cool point about the safety analyzers. So on our safety analyzers, there is a V button and an A button. So when you push that V button, it's going to give you the line voltage. So you can actually see what's coming out of your wall outlet. And this is really nice because we don't always have good clean power in our facility. So when you're plugging in, you can see where your voltage is at today that's coming into your device. Um, this is also really important, like if you're doing emergency generator back, or emergency backup generator tests and they fire the generator on, you might see that voltage sag out or you might see some voltage spikes throughout your day that could be uh, tied into troubleshooting some of your medical devices when they blip in and blip out. Also, when you're plugged into that safety analyzer, so you have your device you're testing plugged into the safety analyzer and the safety analyzer into the wall, if you push the A button, you're gonna get the amperage draw of the device that's plugged into it. This is also really nice, especially for those of us working like cast saws or autoclaves, because it's gonna give you the amperage draw of that device. Some autoclaves are set up so when you read the service manual, it'll tell you what the amperage draw is supposed to be in all the settings. So like warm up, fill, sterilization, and drive. And by pulling that amperage draw, you didn't even have to open the, ch the chassis. Therefore, you don't have to do the full PM. The data is right there at your fingertips. So I'm not quite sure if that's what they're looking for. The other thing they could have been looking for is the ESA 612, 14, and 15 in the US are capable of only doing not only doing 110, 120 volts, but also 220 volts, US only. So you can actually measure both voltage ranges with your ESAs here in the US. So that, that could have also been what they're going for. Well, and that also brings up another question about 230 volt uh, units. Okay. Um, is there any way to test 230 volt units well, with our ESAs? Are they, I'm assuming, are, are they speaking for the U.S. or are they like in a foreign country where they're trying to do 230 volts? So in which case, yes and yes. Um, if you're in another, if you're in a foreign country outside the U.S. borders, we have analyzers set up specifically for your region. So maybe Thailand or Europe or wherever, call into your sales rep, let them know what your voltage is and your frequency and where you're at so that we can make sure we have the right plugs and adapters and setup for you. Another thing here in the US is don't forget, we talked about that point-to-point -point testing in those videos. So if all else fails, you can use point-to-point -point testing to determine your ground wire resistance and leakages. You gotta get a little, watch out there because you can't cause that single fault condition, remember, because if you're hardwired in, you're not gonna be able to break that ground, so. Great, and, and that, that, was, that, was a, that was a US question, actually. Okay. Yeah, so uh, 230 volt US, um, I'm assuming you're probably talking about a hardwired device, in which case you would do uh, point-to-point testing. 
Perfect. Thank you. A three phase type scenario. Great. And then I have another question about uh, storing test results from the ESA 615. And sure. you know how how do you pull them from the 615 to the PC? Oh, that's great. So if you go to uh, our website, flukebiomedical.com, go back to that products tab, go back to the 615, and once you're in there, select software. You're going to have to download the mini plugin. The other place you can find it is from flukebiomedical.com. Go to, uh, let me see here, support, and then software downloads, and then go down to ESA family software and firmware. And once you're there, you're going to need to download the ESA 61415 test result converter. And you'll also probably need the 612 slash 15 communications interface. This doesn't, this means you don't have to buy the whole answer platform. These are plugins that are going to allow you to pull that data off and convert it to a file that your PC can read. Then you can uh, slip it over to PDF or an Excel and easily attach it to work orders. Good question. Hey, Thank if you, you guys are going to do that and take out the SD card, remember, be careful with that SD card because your SD card has your uh, operating system on it. So uh, if you damage that SD card, uh, you'll have to get a new one with an operating system put on it for you. So I like to use the cable to pull my data off my safety analyzers. So I'm not moving that card in and out. Perfect. Thank you, Justin. And this one, we, we may need a little more clarification on this one as well. The question is, what's what's the frequency of calibration in case of ESA? So how often you have to calibrate your ESA? We recommend I'm, once a year. We okay. recommend once a year, yep. Perfect. Might be a good time to mention, we just got some new service plans coming out. If, if, the, if they have Absolutely. the reps. Yeah, we just launched, we just, we're working on redoing our service program right now. And we got some really good programs uh, with some quick turnaround times on them. So uh, might be a good time to talk to your uh, Fluke by Medical rep and ask them about our current service programs. All right, we've got time for one more here. And it was, it was, questioning the uh where they could find the accessories shown in the video oh that's a good question again right back to the website flukebiomedical.com and then what i recommend doing is from there you can go down to the products tab go down to electrical safety analyzers and find your electrical safety analyzers and then you can go to the accessories tab from there and see all your accessories now the team's been the marketing team's been doing a lot of work on this website lately so uh, they're adding all new pictures and better descriptions. So if you haven't been on there a while, try it out, see the new pictures. It really helps you uh, find what you're looking for. Um, that's probably the best way. The 612 and 615 have the most extensive lists. With that, we're gonna go ahead and close things out. Thanks again, Justin. Hey, and, thank uh, you for inviting me. It was a great time. Have a, have a great remainder of your day.